Welcome to the Hazel Rockets podcast, the number one golf podcast for new product launches, interviews with industry experts, golf trends, and more. Here are your hosts, Jen, Ken, and Bill. Hey, I'm Jen. I'm Ken. And I'm Bill. Welcome to this week's Hazel Rockets, where we have Titleist in the house today, and we're going to be talking about balls. Uh, golf balls, that is. Guys, of course, yes. golf balls. Um, okay, so I can't wait about our um, guest speaker. But first, I am super excited to s- announce that we are now uh, up and live on like all the podcast platforms. So, Fantastic. Pl- I know, that's exciting, right? So, please subscribe and watch us on Apple Music, um, Spotify, wherever you're listening to us. Just keep listening to us and subscribe. Or check us out on YouTube, on our YouTube channel, Morton Golf Sales, where you could actually see us. Um, not sure you want to, but we have some bonus content usually on that channel. So and def- we had some international viewers this week. Hey, past week. France is like in the house, and a big huge shout out to you guys. You are, um, you're, you're like our number two uh, watchers, so... You know, we love you. Appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. We'll have to get some croissants for the menu right around here. <laughs> oh, yeah. Send them over. Yeah. We, we need some food. Um, what should we talk about this week? Oh, okay. So, wait. I need to start. Last week, we uh, talked about best golf movies. Um, and how wrong you are. Yeah. I mentioned that Caddyshack is not my favorite movie. Uh, we put out a poll. You guys actually responded. How many do we have? We had 85 votes. Um Basically, the question was, do you guys like Caddyshack? Because you guys, you... We said it was the number one golf movie. Yeah. You guys, as in all of the world's population. Uh, Except for me, because I I don't like Caddyshack. Um, And so I wanted to know if anyone agreed with me. I think it was 85 to zero. (laughs) I think so. It was was close to that. 93% um, think Caddyshack's the best. So... All right, you guys have spoken. I'm I'm obviously don't know what I'm talking about, although clearly, clearly, um, I do believe I, I I stand by it though. I I still don't like that movie. Sorry, um, but I I will say you guys are fine. I we can watch it. See that one statement just discredited everything <laughs> else we're gonna <laughs> say the whole rest. Of the we'll podcast. work on a new host. Yeah, soon. exactly. <laughs> yeah. Sorry guys. Okay, the other thing. And this is getting a little personal, but. I thought, okay, we're on TV now, right? So I need to up my game. I'm not really a girl's girl. Um, uh, Makeup's not really my deal. Uh, Clothes aren't really my deal. Um, Shoes aren't really my deal. Hair's not really my deal. I'm just, you know, t-shirt and and jeans, right? That's my deal. You like cash. I like cash. Okay. I'm very cash. So I'm like, we're on TV. I need to up up it a little bit. So I'm like at the store and see magnetic eyelashes. And I'm like, we got to get these. I, I thought about getting them for you guys as well. But I thought I would start with me and then we'd go from there. So I... Pick some up. They're reasonably priced, under twenty bucks, and I spend about twenty minutes, you know, trying to put them on. They like attach to each other, um, and uh, and then I lose one before I even get it on. Um, that was kind of emb- I, it's gone. I spend then like thirty minutes looking. I, I have absolutely no idea what happened to it. I, I and then that kind of pissed me off. I, I won't. I, I I'll be honest. I spent twenty dollars, lost the stupid eyelash. So I'm like not to be discouraged. And so I go to Amazon and I buy a second pair. So now I'm $40 in, I get another pair of these things. This one has magnetic eyeliner, which I've never heard of, but I put magnetic eyeliner on. That sounds healthy, putting lead in your eye. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Whatever, I guess this is what real girls do. And then I stick these things on, the number one rated um, eyelash, magnetic eyelashes. And I look like a freak. I. Plink, 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 I, I, plink. Came, I did come out to work with them yesterday because I had to show them off and I think I look like a hippopotamus. That was my, that was my, that was my go-to. You, you guys saw them. What yeah, did, you, you, what did you, you think? You posted the photo. And I did post a picture. If you guys want to see it, you can check out my Instagram account because I, I, they were so ridiculous that I had to post them. Um, my Instagram is Jen underscore Morton. 
underscore. So feel free to go check it out for yourself because, you know, if you need a laugh, you should. But literally, I spent $40 on eyelashes. And do you see the eyelashes? No, you don't see the eyelashes because I was ridiculous. It was all kinds of no. Yeah. I think if you get the right stage eyelash yours were just over the top they were just a little bit too much yeah. but you can get some good ones that'll enhance your eyes and uh make it a little bit better but more subtle than what you had on you didn't find those so. subtle you didn't find the fact that no. they reached up to yeah. my yeah. my I think the lashes eyebrows. themselves touched your hairline so that yeah. probably means that they, <laughs> they got tangled in yeah. your bangs yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Were, when, you, when, were... you, when you close your eyes, your hair went down into your face. So that, that should tell you that that probably wasn't. <laughs> they were the my best epic set. fail. And I'm so disappointed in them. Yeah, it wasn't great. No. So, but what about you guys? Any any makeup stories on, you know? Not a one this last week. I won't talk about my makeup story. Right now, so. <laughs> Next week. Uh, Ken, what about you? What happened with you this week? Uh, we, uh, published a book actually, which was kind of, uh, a, a, a major milestone. Um, I have been the, uh, former president of the Association of Golf Merchandisers for three terms and about 12 years ago wrote a, uh, golf retail book for them called the little book of Go- uh, big golf promotions. And, um, since then have written the second edition and the third edition. And then, uh, just recently we just, uh, published the fourth serving of the little book of golf promotions so again it's industry stuff so not super exciting for uh, um, the general public but um, for uh, people who are active in the industry and run their own golf shops or their own retail stores it's uh, kind of it's got 300 examples of what different golf professionals and and retailers are doing across the stores to kind of make their stores more interesting and enticing to uh, to golfers so very cool. Where yeah. can you pick up this book? Uh, currently, all of the Association Golf Merchandiser members um, got a uh, copy of it, as did a lot of the uh, Northern, the National Golf Buyers Association members. Um, but we'll have it up on MortonGolfSales.com here within the next few weeks. Yeah, I'm thinking by the time this goes live, we should be sure it's up there. <laughs> there you go. There you go. And you can still get the original copies as well? Those are still out as well. Yeah, so about 1,200 ideas total. So if you have your own store, it doesn't necessarily have to be golf. Um, But a lot of really good ideas. We recognize a lot of wonderful golf operators across the country in there and uh, kind of share best practices. So basically you're saying I did eyelashes this week and you wrote a book. Pretty much. There you go. Yeah. (laughs) And even I can top what I did. I I found my... uh, Han Solo frozen and carbonite lunchbox. And so, I mean, I really think that... Which actually, you have to go to our Morton Golf Sales YouTube channel just to check this thing yeah. out. I know that this is... A... Did you actually use this? Yes, I did, actually, yeah. There's some things that I've saved and never touched, but this wasn't one of them. This is There's a... some things you have saved. Yes. You just have saved everything. everything you have ever had in well, your possession. Well, not quite, but... Don't you have okay. a room with I all do. your stuff? I do. Yeah. So, but this was this was kind of a fun one. I thought that uh, I would uh, bring in and you know show everybody what what my week was about because this is awfully important stuff right here. Frozen and carbonite Han Solo, especially with the new Star Wars coming out soon. So I remember that scene as a kid too, and I I didn't understand that he was just frozen. I when they when they pulled him up, I literally thought that he yeah, was, that was dead. It. I didn't yeah. I didn't get that when I was what eight years old. Or yeah, something. probably not a true fan then, knowing that uh, he wasn't going to come back. But don't get me on this with Star Wars people like what you did with the Caddyshack, which I'll take because I do like the Star Wars. Have you seen the refrigerators where that's actually the front yes. door of the refrigerator? Yes, now? isn't yeah. that a cool idea? That is a cool. That's idea. on my Christmas list, Kenny. By yeah. The way, okay. So, yeah. All right. Okay. We're going to need Thanks. a lot more viewers. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> a lot more viewers. Um, what else do you have? Um, actually, I, want, I brought in a couple of cool magazines. There's uh, a brand new golf publication called The Golfer's Journal, and um, they just recently came out with their ninth edition. And um, I know we don't. Is it a magazine? It's, or a, it's a, a magazine. Book? It's a quarterly magazine um, that they're putting out. But I'll, I'll give it to you. What's super it's beautiful, cool about, by the way, the yeah. the, the, the it kind of reminds me of like a life. Uh, copy totally it's super high-end paper the photography is amazing and mm-hmm. um and it's designed to be really very collectible they only have six advertisers in the whole magazine and it's they're all high-end so it's like uh scotty cameron tylist link soul oakley uh links and kings leatherworks 
Um, and I mean, it's just, it's beautiful it's a be- inside. It's, it's, yeah, it's a beautiful magazine. Where do you yeah. get this? So it's, if you go to golfersjournal.com, you can actually subscribe to it. And it's fairly high end, but the stories on them are super cool. I just finished the seventh uh, um, issue of it. And in it, they talked about the uh, 1983 Augusta National, um, where when Ronald Reagan was playing on the golf course. Oh, right. Uh, he, there were actually a gunman went into yeah. the clubhouse and um, held up uh, some of the Republican uh, political advocates that were, you know, there uh, mm-hmm. taking care of Reagan while he was on the course and how they whisked him away. But a lot of them got trapped inside the clubhouse, and and I was too young to really, I, I kind of semi recalled the story, but mm-hmm. it went in detail. It was from the perspective of a guy by the name of Lady Wiles who was. Um, a uh, um, a key um, handler for Reagan and how he was actually supposed to play Augusta National and the group behind Reagan, but got held up at gunpoint oh, wow. and, and got you know basically kidnapped and ended up missing his round of golf. And now, you know, 25, 30 years later, still has never, ever had the opportunity to go back and play Augusta National. Wow. And, and how, oh, you know, my gosh. you know, how this life changing thing really takes second place to him being bitter about never ever getting to play Augusta National. And then there's a story in it about uh, a guy by the name of Papua, who was a uh, a um, black African, South African golfer who actually played cross handed that um, took on Gary Player in the uh, South African Open and actually beat him and really kind of helped shape how apartheid uh you know, breaking down some of the barriers and how, um, you know, he died penniless because, uh, you know, the, 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 he wasn't allowed to play in any of the golf tournaments mm-hmm. after he won. And then there's another one about uh, a course in Northern Ireland, uh, Northern Ireland called Kearney, which a whole bunch of the island uh, sheep ranchers kind of collected money amongst all themselves and built a golf course that's now this world class venue and was really just kind of crowdfunded amongst each of them. And they're, you know, the stories go on 10, 12, 15 pages, and they're just fascinating studies. So in, in it's kind of eclectic of, of what's it is. in the, each. Yeah, each. they're really so deep dives. And, and I found, you know, like the, the Augusta National hold up, it's just this giant rabbit hole that I just dive into and now needed to find even more information about it. And um, this, the course in Ireland was the same way. So okay. Are all those in the latest Issue? That was in those? number seven, no. but this I have not read number nine number yet. Nine. But okay. in each one of them, they've got just great, great stories, and and uh, it's totally if you're you know if you're into golf, if you're a big advocate of the game and kind of the history of the game, I, it's definitely worthwhile subscribing. Okay, so this is called the Golfer's Journal. Yeah. Um, sounds like you can go check it out on golfersjournal.com yep. or do a search for that to yep. find it. And it is very beautiful. I mean, just going through it and looking at the pictures, they're very. Um, High quality, um, yeah. both paper. It looks like very much a collector's issue. Yep. Um, very cool, Ken. Thanks for All sharing right. that and with I got, us. I got one more here too. So, we have been um, playing with uh, a lot of the trade-ins that we've been getting. So, what I have in my hand is a um, uh, Scotty Cameron putter. It's uh, a, a mallet, and it's uh, normally comes in a stainless steel color. And we've been taking some of the trade-ins and firing them off to a bunch of different refinishing houses and having these really eclectic finishes made on them and then uh, turning around and selling them so in the store. So let's talk about what so, this one looks like. This is a Scotty Cameron um, Select Mallet 1 yep. that is now very shiny golden appearance. Um, it's pretty remarkable. Um, you sent it off to be refinished. In this case, we sent it off to NorCal Putters, but we've been, you know, Scotty Cameron has a, a studio that does a lot of this type of work. Uh, not quite the refinishing, but... So, but what all did you have done to this particular... So basically, we had it refinished and then had this uh, oxide gold finish uh, plated on the outside of it. So I'm kind of bring it over yeah. here so you guys can kind of take a look. Um, but this is, you know, if the, the Cameron collectors are super rabid, crazy people yeah. that, you know, that love their putters and, and um, love to kind of pimp out their putters. And so, 
you know, Cameron Studio does a lot of stamping and paint fill and uh, does some refinishing and they have some really high-end putters that they build that are kind of one of ones in here. But for people that have their putters already, there's a whole bunch of these refinishing houses that are kind of popping up across the country. It's places like uh, SixSticks.com and uh, we had this one done at a place called NorCal Putters, which is... Uh, yeah, I think we're going to try to see if we can get NorCal Putters maybe to come on the yeah, show. Yeah, that'd be really point. fun. We had another one done that was this... A pearl iridescent like iridium finished putter that changed colors from kind of silver purple blue purple, as yeah. you kind of turned it around I mean, it was it was really stunning so uh, um, other places like putterlounge.com there's another one called bosgolf.com hold on to different places doing it so all of um, them that come back though are one of a kind they are yeah, really and i was gonna say if amazing. you have a, you know an old putter um or if you can you know pick one up on ebay or you know at a garage sale or something that might be something to consider going and having done. I yeah. mean, what is the cost? Uh, it ranges anywhere from about $125 to about $250, depending on what you're having done to it. Um, I And it doesn't necessarily have to be a Cameron either. So uh, I use a, a Cleveland Huntington Beach putter and actually sent it away, and they made a beautiful rose gold finish on it. And the reason I don't have it in here is because a customer loved it so much they ended up buying it out of my bag. But um, it, pretty much, you know, if you can is pick it, it up, they can do it. Is it silent or do you just tell them what you want? No, they have, you, there's a big menu and, you know, there's blue finishes and red finishes and, you know, I mean, you name it. They've got even ones where they actually heat treat it and it creates this cool rainbow effect on it as well. I can tell you really like this process because I think you brought it up all three weeks of our show. Yeah, it's, it's really cool. I mean, it's, again, with personalization and customization that's where kind of our, our industry is going we kind of make product that's really unique to yourself and this is one way you can kind of shape it to your game very cool yeah um are you heading somewhere in the next couple weeks i am i uh later this month will be going to an undisclosed location uh golf digest has uh uh, brought me back on their hot list advisory board. So we'll be uh, seeing all of the new 2020 product and having opportunity to test it. And um, it's really cool with the Digest hot list. They have uh, three waves of people that come in. The first one is a bunch of scientists that are literally rocket scientists that talk about all of the new claims that all of the golf club companies are making and whether they're legitimate or not legitimate. So I remember, you know, I, I had a chance to spend a day with them when they when the Yes putter came out. I remember it had the uh, the kind of um, the shaped etch on the face that was had grooves on it, and they were talking about how it put overspin on the golf ball. And um, the scientists all to a man said that's the exact opposite of what it's doing. Mm. It's actually putting more underspin on the ball and actually making it skid more. And now, yes, putters don't exist anymore, you know, and it's just, it's kind of fascinating there. And then uh, a bunch of retailers come in and talk about trends and, and talk about, uh, you know, brand uh, advocacy with different customers and what customers are coming in and asking for and colors and set makeups and all that good stuff. And then the last piece is they bring in about 20 to 30 players and they actually hit every single golf club. And there's thousands of clubs they go through. Right. Those poor guys go home with blisters on their hands. Um, now and, are the retailers uh, still trying them? We do. Also, we get right, we get yeah. a chance to hit everything, too, if we want. Um, we don't have to hit everything. Right. But um, the, the players, actually, they have sure. to, they literally rank and, and do everything on there. So, so I'm sure you're not going to really be able to tell us a lot about what you like or don't like. Because I'm pretty sure you're going to have to sign a... Non-disclosure. Well, it'll all be published in the yeah, yeah in a few when months. it comes out in yeah. January, yeah, and, and we, we don't even get to more. see what the final results. So you know, Mike Johnston, Mike Stitcher, the equipment editors, and they end up making the final decisions based on all of this data that they're collecting. Sure. Um, and uh, but we you know we we do get to weigh in, and the cool part is I get to see it a few months ahead of everybody else too, and see brands and models I would never otherwise know exist. I mean, it's it's wild. I mean, there's a bunch of Japanese brands and Korean brands and you know, I'm in. What about golf. brands from France? Our our <laughs> yeah. big uh, our big watchers from the show. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe so. Huh. All right. Well, uh, Bill, what about you? I look forward to hearing what's coming from there. Yeah. What do about me? Any, yeah. Do you have anything that that's happened? Are you in any shows coming up? Oh. Well, yes, I am, but it's a few months away. All right. I don't know you if I should tell, say or not. You can tell us in a little bit then. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that. But okay. yes, I want everyone to come watch. So. Excellent. 
All right. Should we talk about who our first guest is? Absolutely. Go ahead. All right. Our next guest is the Northern California sales representative for a Kushnick company, which is uh, the parent company that sells us all of our Titleist golf balls, Pinnacle golf balls, and a lot of our very best selling products. Um, Aaron Young not only knows about all of their cool golf balls that we're going to be talking about, but he's also an expert at sitting sideline watching things like girls, gymnastics, and girls, lacrosse, and girls, <laughs> swimming, and all that kind of stuff. Why would that be? I know. Yeah. I'm all, you're setting yeah. that up kind of weird. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we talk a lot about kids athletics when we yeah. come and visit, but uh, let's welcome Aaron Young onto the set. Hi guys! Hey, hey Aaron. Aaron! Thanks Aaron. for inviting me. Yeah, yeah. Well, we should clear up a few things. Okay. I think we need to. I have two younger daughters, oh. very into sports. There so we go. I am a connoisseur of thirteen-year-old uh, gymnastics, girls lacrosse. Yes. Because you're two daughters, that explains it. Thank exactly. you. Yeah. I think we Thanks. all have uh, teenage kids that are yes. very, uh, very active in youth sports. So take. Well, a thank you for clearing that up because yeah. I think you know no, can make no sports on my end anymore okay, but, yeah. but they are very active in other things yeah. so. all right look at all these fun things we're going to be talking about wow so many goodies so all right. maybe maybe we start with talking about how kind of tie list fits golf balls a little bit i think it's unique in that you guys don't talk about driver distance about your golf balls it's the opposite how you guys work from green, green back and maybe kind of touch upon that a little bit kind of as a theory overall Everyone's fascinated with distance, and we are too, and our golf balls are as long as anything out there, but the best players in the world, the way they make their money is around the green, and how to get better as a golfer is around the green. So when we fit a golf ball, a lot of the questions that we ask in the beginning is, what type of shots do you like to hit around the green? Most amateurs don't hit as many greens as the guys on TV, so you need a golf ball that you're going to that you rely on to get up and down to make par to become a better golfer. So really, our questions in the beginning are, what type of shots do you like to hit? Do you want to hit the ball high, low? Um, how many greens in regulation do you normally hit? And from a fitting standpoint, then we can start narrowing it down and choosing the right golf ball for, for their game. So for example, if you're not a long hitter and you don't usually hit par fours and two, you need a golf ball that's really going to spin around the greens because more than likely you're going to be chipping and hitting little half shots to try and make par. So that's our process when we get into fitting golf balls is we want you to start at the green, find a ball that you can really rely on from chipping and around the green, and then work your way back. And Tylus offers free ball fittings at courses all across the United States, correct? Absolutely. So at Expo, we'll be at Expo for three days, um, and we'll bring three or four of our um, technicians from Fairhaven, and they'll be fitting golf balls. Um, you can get on our website and go through a, a, a ball fitting on our website to learn about um, what is best for your game. And I think that's really important because I know club fitting has been such a big talk in the last decade or so, and that that fitting aspect goes so much further than just your clubs. I mean, you know, Tylus is the number one ball in golf, and ball fitting is a huge part of, of really dialing in your game. It's the only piece of equipment that you use on every shot. So when you think about like that, you really need to take the time and the energy to invest in the best golf ball for you, and fitting is right at the top of that. And actually, with club fitting, golf ball fitting has to be done somewhat in concert of that, because if you're looking for a driver that's maximizing the spin ratio off the face within a certain ratio, the type of ball you have might have it go higher or lower just simply by trading off the ball and not adjusting the driver at all. So. Mm. Um, we're, we're finding a lot more of that where we're, you know, as we're making a driver or a club recommendation, we're having to make a ball recommendation also because there's high spin and low spin balls, high trajectory balls, low trajectory balls, and fitting that in there is key. That's very cool. And I think, I think that really says something because I think in most amateurs' heads, at least beginners, their thought is, oh, I want the ball that's just going to go the furthest. And really, that's not the way that they should be thinking. They should really be, as you guys have both said, looking at it from the t no, from the green and working their way back. Yeah. Um, so that's really good advice, I think, for everyone. And a lot of golfers will say, hey, I'm not good enough to play Pro V1 or Pro V1X. And again, everybody on TV hits a lot of greens. 
I don't. I need the help around the green. Right. And again, since it's the only piece of equipment you play every time, you, you need the best for your game and you need a golf ball that's going to enable you to improve and get better and give you a chance around the greens. And that's why we start there. I mean, I think it's 125 yards and in is where most people need the most help, right? Right. Um, and you can see, obviously, from what Titleist has, what Aaron's going to show us today, there are... Uh, there's a lot of research that's going into the golfers that are out there, and there's there's really a ball for, for everyone, looks Absolutely. like, right? Yeah, yeah. I have that. to share, I've been back to the ball plant a couple times, and they have a massive room in which they have every competitive ball that you can think of. I mean, again, as we're talking about brands and models worldwide that I've never, ever heard of, and they cut them apart, they test them, and using all of that data to come through and try to put together, you know, the best collection of, of different models that they can. Um, there's, you know, there's millions of dollars of research going into the design of these golf balls every year. It's, it's, it's amazing how much effort goes into it. Well, sense. I know there's been a ton of buzz this last week over this white box. So why don't we start there, Aaron, and, and talk about the new EXP-01. Yeah, EXP-01 um, kind of says it in the title. It's Exploratory 01. Exploratory. And we have roughly 75 engineers, scientists, advanced aerodynamic people back in Fairhaven, Massachusetts that come up with a lot of cool stuff. Some of it never see the light of day. This one, I would say most of it probably never sees lot the of light it. of day. Yeah, we have a ton of patents. Um, if you go to the factory, you can see all the patents that, that, that we have. But so... This is a golf ball that we will release really in the next month, and then it will go away, and we'll determine the results because there's feedback cards in each dozen, and we'll make sure that it fits into our lineup. It's a three-piece golf ball. It's a urethane cover, so the cover is very, very soft and spins wonderfully around the greens. But we need to see and we need feedback from our customers um, on from a retail standpoint and our customers who, who play golf. How, how do they like it? Um, would they pay $40 for a, a dozen? Um, is it different from the golf balls that are playing, whether it's the competition or some of them in our line? So what we're going to see in the next month is how this fits into our lineup, and then it'll go away, and then we'll make a decision based on that, whether down the road we make a style of this golf ball, or it doesn't make sense for our lineup, or it doesn't make sense for the, the golf balls that, that we have coming down the road after that. So this is basically our viewer's opportunity to beta test a Titleist exactly. golf ball. Yeah. We have groups called uh, Team Titleist, and mm -hmm. they do a lot of testing, whether it be new Pro V1 or new Pro V1X or any golf balls. We needed a bigger test. Yeah. So as you said, it's a beta test. We'll see in the next month how it, how it works out. They'll compile all the information from all the different people giving us um, data and then you may see it next year you may it may fall dead you just you don't know but this is a good test for us now where can you pick these up can you pick them up only in an authorized tireless uh, yes. retailer yes um so for example i have roughly 100 customers in my account base and probably 60 to 70 of them will have um balls to buy but again once they're gone if you they're like gone, this golf guys. Ball, yeah. they're, they're gone. And they're very limited. It's, you know, it's not like, you know, hundreds of Pro V1s in a shop. It's it's very limited in its scope for sure. Exactly. So go find this ball, check it out, test it, and then fill out the card. This is your chance to give Tylus feedback. Yeah, yeah, it's a great way for them to be invested in what we do from an R&D standpoint. And this is where this came from. Not that you're in charge of the decision, but do you envision this kind of being kind of a new um, uh, evolution for Tylus where there might be an EXP02 and yes. 03 and 04? Ab absolutely. Okay. As we take the temperature of the marketplace and we come up, well, R&D comes up with better and better ideas. That you they can think, take credit for it. Yeah, so, that's yeah. what yeah. they need. The Northern California rep <laughs> taking credit for, for a golf ball. But yes, I do envision a testing process with maybe an 02 and 03 down the road. Again, this is what these guys do and they're wonderful. They're the best in the world at. So you're going to see yeah. new designs uh, coming from us down the road that we will test or I think the plan is to test some of this stuff. So this is our first opportunity to do it. I think golfers by nature are fairly good tinkers. We love, oh, yeah. you know, we love testing and trying the things that are tough to get. This ball is a golfer's dream. It is, to, totally, to, exactly. To, get, to test yeah. and to give feedback to the company. And yeah. like we talked about last week, of the white experimental box, right? Yeah, yeah. I think it's super box. fun. Yeah, I, I just, fun. I think this is a great idea. Yeah. Can we, uh, can, can folks get those on mortongolfsales.com? No. 
No, you have to go into you an authorized. Into yeah, yeah, you have okay. to go into a retailer. Authorized yeah. retailer. Yeah. All right. Well, jumping to the next family of golf balls, um, I know that Pro V1 uh, in the Pro V1 X family has a new evolution that just hit the shelves as well, right? Exactly. So, Pro V1 X Left Dash. So there are one or two golf balls. We are over 70% usage on the PGA Tour. And over 80% of that play a golf ball that they can walk into your shop and buy. Okay, say that figure again, because that that is a remarkable figure. And, and I, yeah, so just say that again. So this year on the PGA Tour, over 70% usage was either Pro V1 or Pro V1 That is X. amazing. So yeah. no matter what was on their hat, more than likely they're playing Pro V1 or Pro V1X. And of all those players, over 80% could come in and buy it off the shelf from you. So it's standard Pro V1 or standard Pro V1X. So not only do we think we make the best golf balls for the amateurs, the pros actually play those exact golf balls. What we do have is a few SKUs out there, and we're gonna make this available to the public, and this is Pro V1X left dash. So it launches about like Pro V1X, which is a little higher launch, but it's much firmer feel and much lower spin. And again, there's only a handful of guys who fit into this segment of the market on the PGA Tour. So we we just want to offer it for the discerning golfer who maybe likes Pro V1X but needs a little more or a little less spin, or for the Pro V1 player who maybe needs to launch it just a touch higher. So I think it, can you point out how the consumer would be able to tell that this box is the left dash Great versus point. the regular Pro so V1? So you can see Pro V1X with the red Has and a red the left, line across. Exactly. And then the left dash down here will separate it and there'll be no red across the box. And this is very, And very, it has a hyphen in front of the Pro V1 on the left dash. Yes, exactly. So this is, you won't find this like you will the EXP01 from an inventory standpoint. This is kind of special order only. Certainly your sales associates can educate people. Um, you can refer back to me as well, but it's very, very limited and kind of special order only. But we did want to bring that to the general public. So if they find a gap in their game and this fills it, then we want to offer that to them. When did you start offering this ball? Yeah, both EXP and Pro V1 Left Dash was October 1st. So just okay. in the past, yeah. you know, two weeks or so. So yeah. that's exciting. Yeah, we've had lots of customers coming in and, and it, Tylist is doing next to no national marketing or advertising in it, but the kind of groundswell of, of conversation going on of the... The golfers know. They, they do, totally. It's, it. Yeah, they, lots, of lots and lots of questions going in there. So Now, so, I yeah. know we can't have the EXP01 on our sponsor, uh, Morton Golf Sales. What about the Left Dash? Left Dash is so limited that we're probably... They'll just have to call in and check on availability. So, okay. Yeah, but, uh, uh, but they can, so... Okay, that's good to hear. And then, Aaron, is the Left Dash... Uh, that's going to continue on... Just yeah. in limited quantities and special order? Yeah. Okay. We just know that for most people, Pro V1, Pro V1X, AVX is going to be the best ball for their game. There are certain discernible golfers that want something that has these characteristics, and we want to give that to them. Just like there's only a handful of people on the tour playing these balls. Okay. Again, it's not an overwhelming success on the tour. I know with Pro V1, there are some new alignment aids coming down the road, too, that's probably worth talking about it. Exactly. So um, we took from several different of our balls, uh, Team Titleist uh, on our website gives us figures from what is a pop popular alignment aids, and you'll see a new alignment aid on Pro V1 and Pro V1X with the two lines right over the Pro V1. Mm -hmm. So when you line up your putter or... Uh, Whatever alignment aid you use will have it now on Pro V1 and Pro V1X, and that is October 1st shipping as well. Nice. So there will be three new products uh, for the customers to come into your shop and take a look at and ask questions about and see. Is that going to be automatically on all Pro V1 and Pro V1Xs? Yeah. yeah. You'll have to. They'll have the regular one, the left dash, and then the alignment aid. All three will be available oh, separately. Okay. So, so yeah. that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, What's the difference between the Pro V1 and the Pro V1X? Great question. I get it all the time. Yeah. So Pro V1 is a lower flying golf ball with a shallower descent into the greens. 
and it spins a little bit less around the greens than Pro V1X, which gets up in the air a little bit easier, stays in the air longer, and has a steeper descent into the green. This is right now the number one ball on the PGA Tour. The Pro V1X. The Pro V1X on tour is the most played golf ball, followed closely by the Pro V1X, or Pro V1. Um, so generally, we'll fit people into flight. So if you want to bring your ball flight down, and you're a little bit spinny, we're going to recommend Pro V1. If you want to keep the ball in the air a little bit longer and have a little bit more spin, we're going to recommend Pro V1X. And then AVX is the third key to that, which is even lower spinning than Pro V1. It's very long off the irons because it doesn't spin, but it doesn't quite give you the spin around the greens that Pro V1 or Pro V1X. So we feel at the super premium price, we have three golf balls that any golfer can fit into. One of the things to consider, too, is we're getting into winter time. The amount of carry that you're going to get on the golf ball um, matters a lot also. So whereas you might play a Pro V1 during the summertime to try to bring that down and get a little bit more roll off the tee, during the wintertime you might be better served actually trying to get a little higher trajectory and a little bit more carry with the, with the Pro V1X. And then feel is important to people, too, but feel and spin are two different things. So Pro V1 feels softer, it's a softer compression, but Pro V1X spins just a touch more around the greens. AVX is a really soft ball off the putter, or it feels soft from a compression standpoint, but it spins the least of the three. So, you know, as, as I talk to consumers, that's a big deal. Like, is compression rating, does that relate to spin? No, it does not. It's just a feel. And, you know, I can't tell somebody what feels good and what doesn't. All we can do is what trajectory is best, and then spin around the greens. Do you need more or less? And the Pro V1 and the Pro V1X have sort of been the granddaddies of, you know, on the tour for so long. So it's it's nice. And, I mean, AVX just a few years ago was, I'm not going to say totally the EXP um, generation, but I do remember when that was sort of kind of a test ball, and um, we brought that in sort of to see how that um was performing and then to see it now be not only be in the line but also be in the line and being compared um, uh, up here with the Pro V1 and the Pro V1X Pro V1 shows that that really has um, performed really well. And this was maybe our first, I don't know, call it EXP 0 because mm -hmm. only California, Arizona, and Florida started with it because it was warm weather and it was released in October, November and then we got great feedback from that so it went into the line. Um, we'll see what happens with the XP01, but it was a good test case for us, and it fit into our line nicely. It brought some customers over to Titleist who maybe hadn't played our golf ball and liked the feel and liked the distance, so it's been a great addition to the line. I know we didn't bring one in here, but uh, Pro V1 had a new introduction of color this year as well too, right? So for years, we've we've wanted to come out with yellow. It's It's a chemistry question. It's a chemistry equation trying to make a yellow golf ball that is exactly the same as Pro V1. So for the first time in 2019, we had Pro V1X and Pro V1 in yellow, and the guys back at Fairhaven figured out the, the chemical equation of getting that yellow color that would play exactly like Pro V1 and Pro V1X. Which it, I think is fascinating okay. how just changing the color could have such a difference on the playability of a golf ball. It's not like they're using food coloring, right? right. Yeah. I know. <laughs> it's not dye, right? <laughs> so, especially with us, because of how successful it is on tour, and to our uh, public who buys our golf balls, you can't have a Pro V1 that doesn't play like a Pro V1 in a different color. And so, it did take us a while to get the prop. It, it's really, it's a chemical equation to make sure you just don't put yellow dye in it and off you go and make the ball because if the ball performs differently it's a big problem. Uh, we've had several senior tour wins with yellow. Uh, we've got one of the best players in the Northern California section playing with yellow so um, from an eyesight standpoint it makes for some people a huge difference so we really felt like that was going to be a good addition to the line and it was uh, starting in February of, of 2019. And I think Fantastic. that says a lot about the integrity of Titleist as well that you guys were not willing to rush something to to market even though you wanted that colored golf ball out there since I mean we see quite a few um, sales of, of the yellows and and stuff until you knew that um, the quality was behind that golf ball. And Kenny hasn't seen it yet but in 2020 you'll see some more color in our lineup so stay tuned. Ah, sneak peek right there exactly. everyone. Stay yeah. tuned. It's exciting. All what right. else is brand new from you guys? I know there's another new ball. Yeah so just 
about four weeks ago, we introduced uh, True Feel. And True Feel will come in matte red come January, so stay tuned. Also comes in white and yellow. True Feel is our softest feeling ball. So if you like a golf ball off the putter and off the wedges that feels very soft from a compression rating standpoint, it, it feels the soft, softest. Um, it gets up in the air very easy. It's got a new aerodynamic pattern. It's got a new core. So we think we've gotten a couple of yards out of um, True Feel versus our latest edition. Um, it's our price point golf ball, so it's very, very affordable. And we think it does everything that you'd expect from this price point. And again, we are excited about color as we introduce this golf ball uh, between white, yellow, and matte red coming in January. It's a big step for Titleist to, to expand into colors. I know, you know, Bill can speak, being our store manager in the Super Shop, we sell a ton of colored golf balls. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, for years, people have been asking if Titleist is going to do something, and so it's been really a fun fun year to have the yellow Pro V ones. So. And yeah, again, we and, our standards are really high, so the, the matte finish and the colored golf balls have to match up to the white, and if they don't, then we won't come out with it. But you'll see more color in our lineup as 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 we move into 2020. Hey, I've, I've exciting stuff. I've shared this story with these guys. Years ago, I was down at Ping, and they had used to make two-tone colored golf balls where one half was yellow and ha one half was orange, and they were doing some testing on the balls where they were hitting the balls end over end, and so I was standing next to a golf pro, and, and they would hit the ball, and we were supposed to call out the color, and so they hit a yellow and orange one, and I yelled out yellow, and he yelled out orange, and we kind of looked at one another and go, well, that's weird, so... Next one was like a white and red one. And again, end over end, I yell white, he yells red. And so ball after ball after ball, we we're calling out different colors. And when we got done, I'm like, all right, I need to know the science behind this. Why are we seeing two different colored golf balls? And we have a color hierarchy in our, in our within each person. And where I might see, you know, yellow, orange, and red best for you, it might be, you know, white and green and blue and and. Um, it's different for every single person. So like for a yellow ball, I can see almost three times farther than a white golf ball. Um, and it's just a matter of sampling it and taking it out in the course to find out it what the It kind of reminds me of a couple years back when they had that gold and, and blue dress, right? Where every, that was like this big thing. What color did you see, the gold or the blue? And, you know, everyone was like, how are you seeing that other color? So, yeah. um, um, this isn't quite, I mean, that is with those two-tone balls, but it is, I think, a true thing that people definitely are picking up one color maybe over another one. I know that I very much lose the white um, as as that flies up. That's, so. a great, that's a great story, actually, Kenny, and I actually have never heard that before. So. Okay. Yeah, so, it so was a, it was a wild experience. Yeah. Could, you know, we were just you know talking you know how you could possibly be seeing a different color than I am, and uh, it's a good example. Yeah. So, and all of our golf balls will come in yellow, from Pro V One down to True Feel. So every price point, we have a color option. Our next uh, ball in the line comes in a third color too, right? In orange. Yes, so Velocity will come uh, as right now. Again, stay tuned. But right okay. now you can buy Velocity in pink, orange, or white. Okay. So, but again, stay tuned. More more fun. All right. More fun coming down the road. Hey, awesome. I can't I wait to see. I think I need to see. get my color hierarchy tested because I can't see anything. <laughs> <laughs> it's because these I'm lights are so bright. Gonna work, I'm going to work on yeah, that. Yeah. Burning your retinas. All right, uh, Tour Soft. I know that's a kind of a new ball in the line too. Yeah, so Tour Soft is a proprietary Serlin, so not a urethane cover, but it's a Serlin that is uh, proprietary to us and is the softest of its kind. So, from a price point standpoint, if you're playing with this golf ball, you're going to see excellent short game spin, but with the distance you would expect with a two piece golf ball, because two piece golf balls normally go a little bit further than some of the urethane balls out there. So again, through our 75 people back in Fairhaven, we've been able to come up with a, a formula for the Serlin that is soft and around the greens is excellent when you're hitting those 50 yard shots or those 25 yard shots. Yeah, because people that have played golf for a long time, Serlin hard means hard, hard right? right? So yeah, you think range balls, exactly, you think everything, uh, right. price point golf balls, but this is, we've tested versus other urethane balls and actually it spins more than some of our competition at a very reasonable price point. Hmm. That's great. Nice. And then you have Velocity, which we've talked about. In the colors, we have pink and orange and white as well. Velocity is the highest launching or one of the higher launching balls that we have. So 
if you're looking to hit the ball a little bit further or need to get the ball up in the air, the velocity, because of its aerodynamic combination, gets up in the air very, very easy and stays in the air. Um, this truly, we don't talk about distance. If you are looking for a couple extra yards, this is a, a good way to go. Now you do sacrifice a little around the greens, um, but from a distance standpoint and the ease of getting the ball in the air, velocity is a good way to go. I found beginning golfers, uh, a lot of uh, women golfers, where their yep. club head speed is not generating enough to get lift and get the ball up. This is a great way to do it. It really gets up in the, the air really easy and maximizes their distance uh, even more so than maybe an avid golfer would see it. it, it doesn't. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Between that and Pro V1X, if you're looking for lift, those would be the two balls to focus on depending on your your color options, your price point, whatever, but those would be two balls to look at in our, in our okay. line. I know as people are watching this, uh, you probably got additional questions. Um, you know, if you're viewing this on YouTube, be sure to, you can list a question right in the notes below the video here, and we will connect with Aaron and Tylist and get back answers uh, to any questions that you guys might have on, oh, yeah, on we, golf ball fitting. We so. definitely welcome any questions. Yeah. Um, plus it gives us some stuff to talk about on the next episode. Um, What's I mean you've you've kind of given us a hint. My next question was going to be what's coming down the line. What's new from Tylus? It sounds like new colors. We'll have some new colors. We'll have some new models coming at the beginning of the year. Probably at the PGA show. Well, you know more, but definitely um, we're in a two-year product cycle for all of our golf balls. So Pro V1, Pro V1X, we're brand new in 2019. So if you look at the rest of the golf ball lineup, we just uh, DT Truesoft became True Feel, so that's brand new. And the other three balls we talked about, you may see some new styles as, as we enter into the PGA show around January 2020. I think that was a pretty good hint of what we so. might expect. Yep. Um, and hey, maybe we'll have to have you come back at the beginning of the year. Absolutely. Um, this has been an outstanding education, Aaron, for our viewers and our listeners. This has been It's such awesome. an important part of the game is, is fitting golf balls because, yep. again, it's, it's the only product that you use every single every time. Every shot. Every yeah. shot. Yeah. That's right. Thanks so much for coming in today. We appreciate it. Oh, it's a pleasure. All right. Thank you. Thank, hey, thank you. Stay tuned. We're going to have a brief message from our sponsor, and then we will be right back. Hey, Bill here. I want to pause real quick and talk about where I got my balls. My golf balls, that is. Morton Golf Sales is the number one online retailer for all your golfing needs. From the newest clubs on the market to the classics that you can't find anywhere else, Morton Golf Sales has the best products and customer service all at the lowest prices. Want to check out their huge inventory of clubs, clothing, golf balls, accessories, and save 12% on your first order? Just use coupon code ROCKETS at checkout on mortongolfsales.com. Exclusions apply. See site for details. Now, back to the show. Mom's Beef Hash has a first name. It's from a can we see. But we all have another name. We call it untasty. We hate to eat it every day. And but if you ask us why, we'll say. Cause mama's hash tastes like trash and we should feed it to the dog. Welcome to the Jack Burgeroni Experience. Hey, welcome back to another Jack Burgeroni Experience segment. And I'm hungry. I could use some Jack Burgeroni. So that's a hint. Are we telling everybody what nope. Jack Burgeroni is yet? No. Nope. It's only week three. I think I we know. better just keep it under wraps. Oh, okay. man. All right. Um, super exciting topic today. I figured since we had Titleist in the house, whoop, whoop, we should talk bifurcation. So I know we know what it is for the listener's okay. perspective. We probably should give them an idea of why I will. this is in the news. Yeah. Okay, I will explain it. What is bifurcation and how does that apply to golf? So bifurcation is two sets of rules, one set of equipment restrictions for professionals and the top amateurs in golf, and another set of rules for everyone else. There's been a huge debate between the USGA and RNA the governing bodies in golf, basically, against um, equipment manufacturers, I would say, and um, maybe some golfers. And I don't want to go so far as to say butting heads, um, because that's not necessarily the case. But um, um, there has been a lot of debate. Um, and then the question is, should there be bifurcation or shouldn't there be? Now, 
before I'm going to like release this to you guys, I'm going to do this very much like, like we're going into the voting polls and give a quick reason why you might be for bifurcation and then maybe a reason why you wouldn't be for bifurcation so that you, if you're just now weighing in and are not passionate about this topic, can maybe start figuring out your own opinion before we dive in. So this is a yes, yes, I want bifurcation. Here's a, here's a possible explanation. Classic golf courses are becoming shorter that's, they're playing shorter as equipment becomes longer for the average golfer. So, or they're becoming obsolete, actually. That yeah, is that, true. That's kind of the, the biggest I word. mean, as every single year, it's like this club is performing seven, you're getting seven yards further as golf balls are, are going further as, I mean, as every single, I mean, and it's true, every, the golf equipment today plays so much further than it did, you know, even 10 years ago. Um, that all of a lot of these classic um, amazing golf courses are becoming obsolete. That's 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 a point. So there is a yes for bifurcation um, or a possible yes. Reasons why it doesn't make sense for bifurcation. No way. Um, this would require club manufacturers to make two sets of equipment or two golf balls, um, one for the pros one for the average golfer. Let's be realistic. How realistic is that? I mean, if you're out there playing with, I'm going to say Pro V1 because we just had Aaron and Titleist in here. If you're um, playing with a Pro V1, do you want your Pro V1X, because that's the one that most touring pros are using, do you want your Pro V1X to be the exact same one that the touring pros are using, or do you want it to be a different ball. Um, and I think that has been something that a lot of golfers have really liked, knowing that they can go pick up the exact same equipment that the touring pros are using each week on the, on, um, on the golf courses and try it for themselves. So I'm not going to weigh in quite yet. I don't know um, um, if I will, and but I'm going to open it up to you guys because um, last week I got a little brutalized with my Caddyshack opinions. So justifiably yes. so. so, well deserved. Yeah. So, what do you guys think? Bifurcation for or against? Well, I I certainly um, I don't know if I would say I'm passionate about it, but I certainly have the view of um, thinking that some of our classic courses where we've had many, many incredible PGA Tour events over the years, um, they can't use these venues anymore, or they have to continue to uh, spend millions of dollars to lengthen the courses, to stretch them out, to uh, have them meet the standards of the tour players today, who are much better athletes today, who hit the ball much further with not only the equipment uh, the clubs are using, but the balls themselves. So I certainly could see... Um, or be an advocate for at least pulling the golf ball back in some form for the elite players uh, versus the amateurs. Um, we just saw Aaron here. I mean, I don't know how many dozen balls he had sitting there. So Titleist makes seven or eight dozen different kinds of golf balls I already. I feel like there are at least eight it, dozen right? here. Uh, so to say that you know the manufacturers would be forced to make extra golf balls for amateurs or for the average player versus what they already do, I don't think it would change a whole lot from what they do now. Um, so it, it, I think it would be really, it's just something that certainly could be tried. Maybe it wouldn't work, uh, who knows. But the tour players um, and, and actually the casual viewer and the, the passionate golfer, we could see, um, they, it would be fun viewing to see some of the courses played that were uh, used for the last uh, several decades again and be played like they were meant to be played with the second shots coming into the par fours and uh, having the troll uh, the holes play true to form if the balls pulled back just a little bit um, you know I, I would I just think sometimes it's week in and week out on the PGA Tour it's maybe not quite as exciting because it's hit the ball as far as you can and these guys are hitting short shots into the greens um, yeah it's it's good for some events but and and it does make for exciting golf when when a lot of birdies are happening but again you could i think you could separate some of the the greatest players in the world 
from maybe some of the average players in the world if the ball is pulled back a little bit and the equipment's pulled back a little bit. And again, one more thing, over a decade ago, there was a golf manufacturer that made a club that was not legal for the rules of golf, RNA and USGA, but the average player could buy it and play it, that it went further. And I mean, that, that's already happened. So it's not something that's totally new, that's unprecedented. But it tanked, didn't it? Uh, right. Did it tank? What yeah, are we it, it, it was very controversial. Yeah, the Callaway ERC was right. the club at the time, and it did okay. But uh, again, the it, it was it created lots of controversy. It did. So I don't know if it performed as well as Callaway was hoping at the time. Yeah, it, in terms of performance, it did. It, it no, went I significantly I, longer. But in terms of sales, I sales. think you're accurate. Yeah, right. So yeah. What about um, you, Ken? So I I am on the opposite end of that argument. So, you know, there, you know, I begin at the discussion of, you know, USGA putting limits across all of the different uh, product categories and then take the next step to the tour. Um, Golfers are not shooting lower scores than they ever have historically. The game is so hard. We should make it as easy to fall in love with the game which means play better golf as we possibly can so you know all of the restrictions that they're putting on on cor on faces and uh with golf balls with how much how fast it can come off the face and all that kind of stuff it just it's artificially limiting the ability for golfers to improve faster and i just can't wrap my my head around that and so when you go when you flip that over to the tour I could see some limitations maybe because, you know, people are really smart. Those engineers are going to continue to evolve that and have the clubs go farther and have the balls go farther. So I could see some caps on there, but I can't see a rollback. I don't want to see them playing worse golf than they did five years ago or 10 years ago. I, you know, unlike Bill, I, I, I think the, you know, Tiger Woods revolutionizing the game with how far he hits it and the John Daly story and, um, you know, uh, Johnson hitting as far as he does. Uh, that's part of the excitement of the game because, you know, Bubba Watson is going to, you know, he's going to hit it a mile. You have no idea where it's going. I mean, and that's that's part of the excitement of it all what as well. What happened a couple years ago with the wedges? Did they... So they rolled back the uh, availability of putting spin on it and, and required them to adjust the grooves to make it not spin as much. And again, for me, why would we do that? For I mean, we're talking about the top two, three, four hundred golfers in the world. Over and then the, handicapping. The millions of others that do that. I mean, it, it just doesn't make sense to me. Well, that's why we're well, talking that, about... But you're, right. wouldn't that, in my opinion, say that you would be for bifurcation? bifurcation. But again, for me, it's, the same rules should apply for everybody. Um, you, you know, forget that it has a, you know, a, a little higher spin rate. It's As long as people have the availability to use any of the equipment, it's still an even playing field out there. Um, you know, I, I, for me, I, I don't think the advancement is going to be coming at such a level. Actually, the... The national driving distance on the PJ Tour this year actually has come down a yard or two as they're learning how to better keep the ball in play. Um, we're not seeing the advancements like we did 10, 20 years ago out on tour. Um, so I, for me, you know, let's keep it all uniform. Let's continue to make the, a product that uh, is is easy to play for all uh, categories of golfers. What's interesting is I know you've got a couple quotes, and I know you know your hero Nicholas has been a big proponent of this. Ironically, anybody out on the tour that's coming out for this is potentially taking a lot of money out of their pocket because if they're going to one common golf ball or one uh, common golf ball construction amongst all the different manufacturers, the ball manufacturers are no longer going to be paying millions of dollars to the pros for playing their golf ball. Is that what they're saying? That would just be one ball? That, that's one of the conversations that has been going on, that it would be one single like golf a tournament ball. ball yeah. basically. But, mm. um, but you know, the, the ball manufacturers, they're trying to put the best product that they can out there, and if they're having to put a handicapped ball out there that all of the pros are using that you know is uniform amongst all of the different manufacturers, 
boy, oh boy, at that point in time that, you know, I can't see the ball manufacturers spending the money that they do with the PGA Tour players uh, and, and all the other tours, champions and LPGA and European tours, um, that they are right now just because, you know, it's not going to be a great worthwhile investment for them. So before we go a little bit deeper, I mean, the USGA and the RNA kind of handicap a bunch of equipment now anyways. Right. I mean, there's but, all but sorts they do of limits. But for all categories. It's uniform amongst everyone. And but I'm so, not advocating anything. I mean, I want the newer golfer, the amateur golfer, the, the golfer, that the casual golfer to have as much fun and to get as much advantage as they possibly can with the equipment. I just think that at the elite level, you could roll back a little bit and they, they're still the cream's going to rise to the top because they're going to still and they're still going to hit it a mile and they're still going to um, spin the ball and, and make it exciting to watch it's just that you might be able to bring some of these great courses back into play and you might i think you may even change the dynamic of, of of where distance is just everything on the pga tour and you could have some other players that have awesome skills that might be able to perform better when if, if it was a little more uniform just again at that elite level yeah there's players you know of yesteryear like Corey pavin and calvin yeah. pete and you know they could never compete on the tour today with the yeah. distance that the guys are hitting it and um but again you know for me the the best athletes in the world are the biggest and the strongest and, go and golf has evolved to where it's not any different than baseball or football so Lynx Magazine, I want to give them a shout out because um, um, I pulled these from there. Uh, they pulled together some statements from what they refer to as BPGs, Big People in Golf. So a little bit bigger, I think, than your bigger guys. Bigger than Kenny and I? Yeah, you guys are pretty Not big. Not size. Oh, I see. Sorry. <laughs> but um, I thought I would read some of these. Mike Davis, Executive Director of the USGA. Um, for those who think we should bifurcate, I'm telling you, you haven't thought through the ramifications. Once you open Pandora's box, it will forever change the game. We are steadfast on this one. People who want to bifurcate don't understand what they're asking. But he doesn't, that's, um, Peter Dawson, Chief Executive, Royal and Ancient, that's the RNA. We think it's a central strength of the game of golf that we all play the same game by the same rules and we can compare our abilities with the top players in the same playing arenas. Pete Dye, golf course architect. I took him. He's one of our architects, isn't he? Uh, Perry Dye, his, um, uh, his brother is, but okay. yeah. Uh, they've got a club and a ball now so that when a guy cracks it a little bit downwind or when the sun shines a little bit or something, they can carry it 310 or 315 yards, and that changes every golf course that's ever been built. So, I mean... So he's four. That's what yeah. I would say. Yeah, it, it, I, I'll, I'll use an example and maybe an analogy with You're different You're interrupting sport. the BPGs. Yes, I am. So with baseball, you have all of these kids that learn to play with aluminum bats, and then they go up and they play Little League with aluminum bats, and high school with, with aluminum bats, and college with aluminum bats, and then they get drafted, and what do they have to use? Wooden, wooden bats. A whole bunch of kids wash out because they can't use a wooden bat. It's got a different feel, different weight, different structure. It's like learning to hit a baseball all over again. Great hitters in college and high school. Some of them never learn how to best use a wooden bat. Why would we do the same thing in golf? I don't know. I thought that's you know for me that that's well, what. Why we're does doing. baseball do that? Though? I know. I'm all. Why I mean, are, where are they, we asking the because golfers? the aluminum bats the pros would hit it out of the park. Yeah, right? just, I mean, for, just having to, the different rules, and that's why at the lower levels they're starting to roll back some of the aluminum bats, I guess, but. Um, and I just, the, the uniformity of rules in golf is one of the kind of hallmark, you know, things in our industry. And, and I, I just, it's hard for me to wrap my rant in my head around having two separate rules for, for, you know, 300 of the top golfers in the world and then everybody else. And I don't disagree with that, but at the same time, you know, we were talking about making the game more fun, bringing new people in. And so what's happened over the last few years with the USGA rules of golf? They've continued to soften them and change them to engage more people, to make it more fun. Just, you know, just a thought. It, it, change is not, again, unprecedented. And you just quoted, I think, Perry, Perry Dye. Pete Dye. Pete Dye, Pete, yeah. uh, Pete Dye sorry. Uh, Pete's saying the, uh, the guys are hitting at 310, 315 in the air. It's more like 350, 360, 370. We know our own homegrown Cameron Champ 
can drive the ball, you know, that far. And some of these guys hit it 400 yards. I mean, it's it's far. It's far. Yeah. Couple more. Yes. Okay. Jack Nicholas. I know someone who likes Jack Nicholas in the room. Who's that? Hall of Fame golfer. That the amateurs play with one set of rule. Well, excuse me. Let me start over. That the amateurs play with one set of clubs, and the pros play with the others permanently. I don't think that. I don't think is the right way to do it. As much as I would like to see the golf ball adjusted, I would hate to see them have two golf balls. I think it's right to play with one. Tiger Woods, PGA Tour golfer, and this is the last one I, I grabbed. I just think that it's nice if we play on a global basis, and I mean global being that everyone plays under the same rules, where the two governing bodies, the USGA and the RNA, they police our sport and we play under the same rules. And it's nice for amateurs to understand that they're playing by the same guidelines we are. So Tiger's saying more what Kenny is, and I'm, I guess I'm a little confused on what Jack was saying. So I does am. he want one ball that's pulled back for everyone? I would probably. hate to see them have two golf balls. Probably wants to use the gutter percha again. <laughs> I think so. it's right to play with one. Feathery, I don't know. Okay. Back yeah. when he first started. Yeah, Actually, exactly. back when you first started, too. So <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. I don't right. know. What do you guys think? I don't know. It's it's definitely it's complicated. There's there's no doubt about that. But I again for me I, I wanna see universal and it being a retailer too, I, I wanna be able to see the people be able to come and buy the same product that their heroes are using too and that would eliminate all that as well. So All right. Any final words for me, Bill? No, like I said, I'm not I think I mentioned I'm not incredibly passionate about this, but I do see the viewpoint of just um trying to bring the distance down however that's done just just a little bit this is a great opportunity i mean in my opinion this is this is a topic that has um people can be pretty passionate about so i would love to hear your guys's um our viewers uh, opinion on this if you're watching on our morton golf sales youtube channel please just leave a comment tell us what you think um Drop us a line, uh, uh, jmorton at hagenoaks.com. You can always reach me. Um, and we'll publish your comments. We'll talk about them next week. Uh, and um, we can do a poll. We'll always yeah. have a poll. I guess like, it seems like we're going to do a poll. Um, it's and okay. This one will be fun to see what the results are. Yeah. Because, yeah. 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 You didn't like their Caddy Shack poll? Kind of well, knew what that one Kenny was going to be. Kenny knew what was yeah. happening there. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, with that, we're going to bring this episode to a close. Um, be sure to stop, be sure to subscribe to our channel if you Easy like for you to say exactly. Yeah. Um, and if you're looking for new product, uh, please feel free to check out our sponsor, Morton Golf Sales. And uh, we'll see you next time. Bye, everyone. Bye.